Good morning, and welcome to All Souls Catholic Church in Sanford, Florida, for our celebration of Holy Mass. We also welcome those of you who join us today via live stream. Please see the bulletin for more information on most of our announcements. The 19th annual St. Vincent de Paul Long Sleeve Shirt Drive is continuing now through Holy Thursday, March 28th. You may participate by dropping new or clean, gently used long sleeve button down shirts for both men and women in one of the two St. Vincent de Paul blue metal boxes outside of church at the entrance area to the parking lot as you drive in. Thank you for your support. Attention graduating high school seniors. Applications are now available for you to apply for one of several needs-based $1,000 scholarships through the Society of St. Vincent de Paul here at All Souls. The application deadline is March 26th. The application is located on the St. Vincent de Paul page of the All Souls Parish website. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul will have their Friends of the Poor Walk on Saturday, March 16th in Sanford's Fort Mellon Park. Registration is at 8 a.m. with the walk beginning at 9 a.m. After Masses this weekend, Vincentians will be outside to sign you up for the walk. You'll be able to buy a chance on their baskets and bid on silent auction items. This is their largest fundraiser, and now is your opportunity to help those in need. The Council of Catholic Women are hosting a fashion show and luncheon at the Lake Mary Marriott on Saturday, March 23rd. Doors open at 11 a.m. Proceeds will benefit local charities. Reservations are required. Please see the bulletin for more details. All Souls Catholic School is now enrolling for the 24-25 school year. Scholarship opportunities are available through Step Up for Students. Please contact the school office for more information on how to enroll your children. As we enter into divine worship, please take a moment to ensure your cell phones and other electronic devices are silenced. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, commonly called Laetari Sunday. Our Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Earl Maurice Barnett. Our celebrant and homilist is Father Jeremiah Payne. Our entrance hymn can be found in the Green Book at number 487. Rejoice, the Lord is King, number 487. Please rise and join in worship.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries of our redemption, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people in his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans 
and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time that it lies waste, it shall have rest while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. An award worm of welcome. See, that's daylight savings time for you. A warm word of welcome to all of you joining us here for the fourth Sunday of Lent. This Sunday is also known as Laetare Sunday. Laetare is a Latin word which means rejoice. And it's called Laetare Sunday because in our introit, which is the small scripture reading that begins every Mass, In the introit for today, it begins in Latin, which is our ritual language as Roman Catholics. Laetare Jerusalem, rejoice Jerusalem. And until 1917, and less so in 1970, Lent was extraordinarily rigorous. You guys think you have it hard now. You ain't seen nothing until you saw the Lenten practices before 1917. Y'all got it easy, so I don't want to hear any whining and complaining about Lent. But until 1917, uh, Lent was extraordinarily rigorous. And Laetare Sunday was 
sort of the midway point of the Lenten season. And so on this Sunday, the disciplines of Lent were relaxed a little bit. The vestments changed from violet to rose. Flowers were permitted for this one Sunday. The organ was permitted to be used for more than vocal support on this one Sunday. In light of giving us a vision of being nearer than before to the great Easter mysteries that Lent leads us to. And so it is a Sunday with subdued anticipation, subdued joy, subdued delight in looking forward to the Easter mysteries. And so we, here we are at the halfway point of Lent, and I welcome you all on this Sunday. I was talking with my dad on our weekly phone call this past week, and we were reminiscing about my great-grandfather, his grandfather, uh, great-grandpa Payne. Great-grandpa Payne died in March of 1997 at the age of 98 years old. Grandpa wanted to die in his vineyards with his, uh, I was about to say good shepherd, with his uh, German shepherd <laughs> by his side. And that is just how he was found on a warm March day. On his, John Deere, on his John Deere tractor, out in the vineyards with his dog by his feet, having passed away just how and where he wanted to. But Dad and I were talking, and we've said it a hundred times before, Grandpa was born in 1899. And we just marvel at the things that Grandpa got to see, those things that for us are masterful news pieces throughout the 20th century. Grandpa, and I remember him talking about it, Grandpa was 13 years old when he read the Dunkirk Observer about the downed Titanic. He was 30 years old when the stock market crashed and the Great Depression began. And he was just three years younger than me now at 42 years old, I'm 45, when uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed on December 7th. A remarkable life marked by so many historic for us events. And I know we've talked before in other sermons about how each of our generations and each of our lives are marked by these extraordinary historic moments and news events. We've talked about the Kennedy assassination, landing man on the moon after the space wars began with Sputnik. Of course, for my generation, the explosion of the Challenger space shuttle and 9-11 and there's others, too, that mark our history. But I have been thinking about one that in the moment was as monumental as the others, it seemed, but is largely forgotten today. It was a Wednesday in October, October 14th to be precise, in the year 1987. I was walking home from the school bus and coming into the house, and I noticed that my mother was uncharacteristically watching CNN, the young cable news network at the time, instead of catching up on her Days of Our Lives and the Dark Shadows reruns at the time that she would usually be watching. And as I looked at the screen, it was a scene out of Midland, Texas. Apparently, a young 18-month-old girl by the name of Jessica McClure one whom we would come to know as Baby Jessica throughout the next 56 hours, had fallen into an eight-inch well cast in the back of her parents' yard. She'd fallen 22 feet to the bottom of that well. One leg went in down, and one leg went in one up, and it was smashed against her. Now, just to give you perspective, an eight-inch well cast is about this big. Could you imagine an 18-month-old falling down a hole this big? For the next 56 and a half hours, given the nature of CNN, we watched this situation unfold before our eyes. The whole nation glued to CNN. All of us knew there was not a real chance, not a really good chance that we could rescue baby Jessica. But you had to hope and you had to try anyway. As the hours ticked by and the harder than granite surfaces of Midland, Texas, which until this point 
had been not known to the nation or known only to those who followed high school football for those who would go into college ball, all eyes were glued on drilling that failed again and again because of the hard soil. The plan was to dig a complementary well parallel to the well that Jessica had fallen into, to go deeper and then to dig laterally under her and to bring her out from the bottom of that well. But it proved to be a nearly impossible task because of the toughness of drilling. They finally bought in oil rigger drills who were able to get down the 25 feet, but then the other problem existed. Their augers and their, and their jackhammers were not made for lateral drilling, especially in such a small spot. Our hearts fell collectively in our chests as we realized it would be nearly impossible to make that lateral dig to get under baby Jessica. There was no way to get her out from the top. We couldn't even get food down to her. All we could do was pump oxygen into that hole. And yet, we could hear with the microphones down there that sweet baby girl singing Winnie the Pooh to herself to comfort her. President Reagan said in those moments, We as a nation, all of us, became godmothers and godfathers to baby Jessica as we prayed, as we hoped, and as we watched, knowing that she was going to die, but hoping that something could be done to save her, that poor little girl trapped in the darkness. And finally, somebody came up with the brilliant idea to use a new technology, water jet cutting, to make that lateral cut. It was 48 hours in, when we got the lateral hole cut over to her, and then somebody had to shimmy down that hole and see if we could get her out without harming her more. At the 56 and a half hour marker, a nation up for two and a half days glued to CNN, that famous image emerged of that paramedic who was brave enough to go down, coming out of that hole with that beautiful baby girl, alive. It had been a fool's hope. There really wasn't any hope at all. But nonetheless, we tried. And in the end, because of that effort and because of millions of prayers, baby Jessica was alive and safe and returned to her home. It was one of, if not the most heroic search and rescue mission of our national history televised to all in front of us. And I often think of it when we come to this scene with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Of course, we hear here today what is perhaps the most famous and well-known verse of sacred Scripture. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whosoever should believe upon Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, comes to Jesus in the nighttime. In John's Gospel, it's not just the astronomical reality of night that John is hinting at, but it is the darkness of sin. It is the darkness of a wounded intellect and will that was separated from friendship with God from the very first moment of Adam's rebellion in the garden. Darkness is a sinful darkness, not just a part of the day. And it is in this darkness, this deep, dark well, that Nicodemus and all of us who are born into original sin find ourselves. It is in this place that Nicodemus comes to query Jesus about what he is about, about who he is, about why he's here. And in this verse, John 3.16 that for so long has been marked on cars and bumper stickers, memorized by children, tattooed onto arms and flesh, carved into the charcoal of football player faces, and every other iteration of John 3.16, Jesus reveals what is, in fact, the greatest search and rescue mission of all time. That the God of all glory would send His only begotten Son into the dark well of our sin where we will die because we cannot save ourselves, because we cannot get out of our own predicament and nobody can help us to get out because of that very same predicament. That God sends His only begotten Son to the farthest depths of our human enslavement to the darkness of sin. 
to find us, to rescue us, and against all odds and against all hope to bring us home. And in the waters of baptism, every one of us find ourselves in that situation. Except it's not that Pulitzer Prize winning photo that appeared on the next month's issue of Time magazine of the paramedic holding baby Jessica, but rather the Lord Jesus Christ with His pierced hands and feet carrying us to safety in His kingdom, putting us on the road that safely leads us back to Him. The greatest search and rescue mission the world has in fact ever seen. But here's the point as we contemplate that during Lent. The moment every one of us is rescued, the moment every one of us is baptized and come under the flowing waters of our salvation, we become part of the Lord Jesus' search and rescue team. As I've said so many times before, your religion is not about you and it's ultimately not just for you. We Catholics have become so good in the past 60 or 70 years of privatizing our faith and keeping it locked up in our churches for those of us who still come and in our homes, in our hearts, and in the rosaries that hang on the front windshield of our cars. And that's it. We Catholics have let our voices fall silent to the needs of this dark well of a world that need the courageous paramedics like that man in 1987 to be Jesus' rescue team going down into the well. But this moment in Lent reminds us of the obligation that we have, whether we choose to engage it or not. The obligation that we have by virtue of our baptism to be a part of Jesus' search and rescue team. We have been rescued. We are here today. But there are so many more, like baby Jessica, who are caught in the deep, dark, tight well of their sin that need to hear and see the light of Christ coming from you. About this time every year, during my own Lenten penances and reflection, I take a mental exercise. I imagine myself having just passed away and the Lord showing me in my particular judgment all of the souls that I had encountered that were lost. That were lost because in those particular moments, I didn't let the light of Christ shine through me. Maybe I was being selfish. Maybe I was, uh, maybe I was shirking my apostolic duties as a priest. Maybe in that particular moment, I was afraid to speak His name. Or I was afraid to stand up for the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Or I was embarrassed. And I said nothing. And that soul never heard or never saw because I chose in those particular moments not to be part of the search and rescue team. Not to do the daring rescue that Jesus had done for me. And it motivates me to strive to always be a part of that search and rescue team. But the search and rescue team doesn't just exist for those of us who are priests or bishops or deacons or members of religious institutes as brothers, sisters, monks, and nuns. It belongs absolutely to all of us. As I think about these things, I shudder to think what my life would be or if my life would even still be if Lynn Carroll in that summer of 1993 hadn't seen my predicament as a wily and lost teenager and had the courage to share his name with me. If she had saw a wily, rebellious teenager and was afraid that I would reject her when she brought up the Lord's name to me and not done so, I wouldn't be here today. But I am now in this pulpit because that woman took a 15-year-old kid who was hurting in the darkness of his own deep well and showed me who He was. She was His face in that moment when I needed it most in my present darkness. 
How many people have crossed your path thus far in your life who in that particular moment needed to see His face in you and needed to hear His name on your lips in a moment in their life where they needed Him most, but they didn't see it and they didn't hear it for whatever reason. Brothers and sisters, it is time that each of us take seriously the responsibility of what we are called to in our baptism. It is not a suggestion but a command that every one of us be a part of this great search and rescue team. The salvation of souls is the work of all of us, not just me. And it is incumbent upon us that we strive to do so for all of our living days. You and I are beneficiaries of John 3.16. You and I are beneficiaries of whatever paramedic came down that well to bring us to the waters of baptism safe and alive. But there are many, so many, many more out there that need to hear from you and not just me that God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe upon Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? Let us stand and make solemn proclamation of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray, my dearest brothers and sisters, to God our Almighty Father and implore His mercy because He does not desire the death of the sinner, but that the sinner be converted and live. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts aversion for our sins. For those who have died, that they may be raised up on the last day. For the intention for which this Mass is offered, the repose of the soul of Alfred Morales. Kyrie.
For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. As we prepare for the solemn celebrations of the Paschal Mysteries, we beseech you, O God of all goodness, that you hear our prayers, so that we may always enjoy the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born into the slavery of ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of heaven cry out, and without end acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, <coughs> and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days to your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day before he was to suffer took bread into his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your ministers and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and precious blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. On you say, Vitalis Pecata Mundi, Miserere Nobis. On you say, Vitalis Pecata Mundi, Miserere Nobis. On you say, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodia. Praise you with the heart. 
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would those distributing Holy Communion to the sick and the homebound please come forward. My dear Son in Christ, as you go forth from this sacred assembly to bring the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ to the sick and the homebound, go now with God's blessing and everlasting peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Just three brief announcements for you. One is our update for the Our Catholic Appeal from Bishop Noonan. Uh, We've been doing weekly updates, uh, but it will now become a monthly update uh, after today. So we have concluded week five of the 2024 Our Catholic Appeal for Bishop Noonan. Our goal was $228,034.11. We have pledged at the end of the fifth week $154,276.86. That is two-thirds of the way to our goal. This represents 288 unique pledges, or 10% of our parish population. 10% has put up two-thirds of our bishop's appeal. Imagine what would happen if the other 90% stepped up to the plate. I don't know what it is about human nature that allows 10% to do and 90% to watch, but that's not who we are as Christians. So 90%, chop, chop, let's go. (laughs) We have $73,757.25. I know one of you has got a quarter out there. Uh, 25 cents to go to meet our goal. And I thank all of you who have gotten us to the two-thirds point in five weeks. And I thank all the rest of you who will help us exceed this goal. Uh, Secondly, uh, I had hoped to present to you the master plan for our property by now, but part of the process is the civil engineers going to the government, and you know how government works. I'm sorry if you're a politician out there, but y'all is slow. (laughs) So we've gotten through every meeting but one with the civil engineers. We're waiting on the Department of Transportation to review the plan. As soon as that review is done and satisfactory, we will make any tweaks or changes with the architect necessary, and hopefully very soon I'll be presenting the master plan for the rest of our property out here. I'm so excited to show you uh, what we have come up with. Finally, uh, because it's a scrutiny weekend, if you are here and you need your mass passport uh, book signed, today we are going to put this in there, so just have your parents or you write it if you can. I want you to put Nico 0310. Nico is a Nicodemus from the gospel, N-I-C-O. Nico 0310. If you put in Nico 0310, your catechist will know that you were here today. So you don't need to come to me or Deacon Tom with your passport book today. Uh, And those are the three announcements. So, without further ado... The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn can be found in the Green Book at number 627, What Wondrous Love Is This, number 627.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>